that we are not just a local church, we are a global church. And recently, we did have our world conference at uh, Cape Town, Sa South Africa, and I was part of that. And uh, we have also si Doc, Doc Eloy and Chris Chrysostomo. Nagkita po kami doon. Nandiyan pa ka ba? Nasa pa si Sir Chris? Ayun, saka si Doc Eloy. Palakpakan po natin sila. You know, it really takes faith to be there. And I'm so glad that... Uh, we had this conference every three years. Medyo na delay lang po tayo because of the pandemic. But uh, there are a total of uh, 71 nations. That 5,000 uh, different nationalities gather at South Africa. Uh, just in, our, uh, in the Philippines alone, we, I think mga 400 uh, delegates tayo dito. No? So that's really a big number. But uh, again, the reason why we're doing that is because we want to make sure that uh, we, we honor God as a worldwide movement, and we call ourselves Every Nation and Victory. And so I uh, just want to let you know how blessed we are as a movement being part of what's happening in the global you know, sphere of uh, this world. And uh, praise God for what's, what the Lord is doing. In fact, there's a lot of church planting happening all over the world, even in, well, yeah, sorry, hindi ko pwedeng sabihin yung iba. Patik na. Pero grabe po yung ginagawa ni Lord sa mga creative access nation, which, you know, it's hard for us to get in, but the Lord has really opened the doors for us. And uh, many people have sig signify their interest, you know, their desire to uh, answer the call of God in full-time ministry, special being a church plant or a church planter in the different nations of the world. How many of you are glad that we are a global church? So let's give the Lord a big, big hand for that. And so thank you for praying for us. And so, well, that said, um, we just started a new series last Sunday. And we, we, we want to emphasize who we are, you know, as a church. Because I believe it's important for us that we started with miracles. And we continue on to talk about miracles. I guess, well, not guess, for me, the, the greatest miracle a person could ever experience is really a life that's been transformed by God. And that will never happen apart from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There will be no genuine change unless we encounter Jesus Christ himself. And so that said, uh, in the next six weeks, okay, we want to talk about the tenets of our faith. We want to talk about doctrines regarding what we believe, and that's why we call this series, What Shapes Us. And so it is important for us to know who we are first as a movement, that we as a movement in every nation and as a local church community, as Victory, that we are a missional movement. Everybody say missional. missional. There's a mission, a mandate that God has given His church. And his mission is our passion. The very heart of God, if I would say that, is really about nations. It's really about reaching not just Filipinos, but reaching every nation of the world. And I'm glad we call ourselves every nation. And so as a missional movement, it's our mission that draws us together. If there's anything that glued us together, it's a mission of God. We're excited about people getting saved. Are you excited about people getting saved? Why? Because part of who we are is not just for us to eat and have parties and have a good life. Part of who we are is simply to answer God's call because there is a world out there, a dying world out there that God has called us to reach. We are missional. Secondly, we are also relational. God himself is a relational God. Therefore, if God is relational, his church, he expects his church to be relational. Whatever nationality, whatever background, whatever color, race, personality, a person has, we could be able to relate because that, who, that is who God is. And it's our relationship that keep us together. Whether we like it or not, we're going to fight for this relationship because we believe for a long and lasting relationship 
We don't believe in a disposal relationship. And this world adheres to that. But for us as a church community, no matter what, we're all going to experience pain, hardships, disagreements. But we all agree to disagree. Hello? Because that's the way God formed everyone. We're so different, but we can be the same. Why? Because we are relational. We're going to fight for our unity. And I praise God since the start of our church back in 1984. We have never experienced church splits. Hindi ko tayo naka-experience ng na church na nahate. People will leave, fine. They could always leave. It's really up to them. But if God placed you here and this is your church community, I don't see any reason why you can't get out of this of this place. Just like for me, I'm a, I'm a Constantino. You know, I didn't plan to be Constantino. How I wish I could be a Kowanko. No, no, no. I can tell my parents, hey, look, mom, dad, how come we're not Kowanko? We're not a Marcos? We're not an Aquino? You know what I'm saying? The same way I believe that every person has been placed by God in a church community. We are relational. It's our relationship that keeps us together. Lastly, we are spiritual or theological. We value sound theology or sound doctrine. And it is important for us to talk about this. We are a movement that will last 100 years from now. Can you say amen? This is not a matter where the first the, the founders of our movement, after they have founded this movement, pagkatapos ng mga leaders na nauna sa atin, pag nawala sila, wala na rin po tayo. No, that's why we talk about generations. We talk about mission. We talk about the importance of family because we're going to pass the baton. We expect that the next generation will be better than us. Are you here with me? Yes. And it's important for us to talk about our foundations. And we believe our theology strengthens us together. It's the very thing that holds us together as a church community. Wherever we go, what takes us, what, what drives us all the more and strengthens us, no matter what the storms that we're going to face in the future, we're, go, we're going to be sustained by this. Why? Because we are embedded and rooted in our theology. And that said, we want to talk about doctrine. Today, we do want to talk about the creation and the fall. So this is not the usual preaching that we do. This is more of teaching, giving you information, understanding who we are and what we believe. And because this is doctrinal, this is the one that shapes us. This is what we believe and what we adhere to. Before I jump in and share to you the text, I would, I would like everyone to stand on our feet, and I want to read why we believe in the doctrine of the creation and the fall. I want to read it to you. We believe God created all things, visible and invisible, out of nothing, and all that He did, He did it so good, or He did it very good. He sovereignly sustains and governs creation for His glory and the benefit of His creatures. God created humans in His image, male and female. To know, love, and glorify Him in covenant relationship and to serve as stewards of the earth. The first man, Adam, sinned against God, resulting in alienation, death, guilt, shame, and curse upon the earth. Separated from God and subject to His judgment, all humans have inherited a sinful nature from which they cannot save themselves. Let's all... As we stand up, let me read God's Word today in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 to 20. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 
For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He's the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've done for us. That if not for you, Lord God, all things, the universe, all cosmic powers and authorities, will not be possible. We will never be here today apart from your creation. Lord, thank you that you own us twice. First, that you created us. Second, that you bought us by your blood. And that's why we are children of you. Lord, thank you for this doctrine of creation. May we fully understand and be rooted and established in this doctrine As we lay down your word today, we ask your Holy Spirit to be upon us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Please take your seats. Well, based on the scripture, the text that we read, Jesus himself is the image and the invisible God. That the word of God says he was the firstborn of all creation. Right from the onset, Jesus was present. He existed from the very beginning. He was, the Word of God says He was the firstborn of all creation. Why is that? Paul was saying, because Jesus eventually will become man, Paul wrote that He's the firstborn of all creation. He is our Creator. And because of that, we come to the understanding of creation and later on the fall of man. To understand this, first things first. Number one, God the creator created all things good for his purpose and glory. God the creator created all things good for his purpose and glory. Last week, nung kami po yung nag-attend nung World Conference natin. Kita-kita po kami ng mga pastors from Manila, but what's really exciting was we started to meet other pastors who came from different nations. Once again, I saw my classmates in our Every Nation Seminary. My professors, in fact, they had their convocation the first batch. It was really fruitful. It was really productive. It was glorious. It's not really the message that it really inspires us. It's really the people. It's the presence of God in the midst of different nations coming together, worshiping Him. It's just like a fortress of heaven. And before the, before the conference itself, we had at least two, three days, okay, to, uh, to just uh, prepare ourselves, but... Uh, because the place was so nice. Alam mo, sobrang, for me, it's a paradise. The city itself was paradise. And so there is this mountain, this glorious mountain they call the Table Mountain. So if you're going to go and visit Cape Town, you should not miss going up to this mountain. All right? And so all the pastors... Okay, decided we're going to go to this mountain, we're going to tour the city, and true enough, it was overwhelming. Noon nasa taas po kami, sa totoo lang, ano, sabi ko po doon sa mga pastors na kasama ko, sabi ko sa asawa ko, can you imagine we're here on top of this mountain? I can't understand that God has to bring us for us to see His creation, for us to appreciate the other side of the world. So, totoo lang, we don't deserve this. What ang nagawa natin dito? What if we didn't answer God's call? 
are we going to have a chance to see that other side of the world which considered as one of the wonders of the world? It was so overwhelming. And we're grateful to see that wonder of God's creation. And so we were saying, I think there's really more. And so we don't have time to really go around. We actually miss it. But on our way down, we saw the ocean. Yung sinasabi ng Bible na squall, alam mo nyo, yung parang may ipo-ipo tapos may squall. We saw it right there. When we were going down in a bus, kita po namin na talagang parang may, ano, dun, may whirlwind dun sa, ano, whirlpool dun sa mismong dagat. No? Parang sabi ko, grabe naman ka-amazing yung creation ng Lord. And uh, we were just thankful to be part of this, knowing that truly God is a God who is the God of creation. That said, our own universe, we figure it out, it's just so small. I was discussing it with my daughter yesterday that she had the moment when 2019, we also had, we had a, were part of the World Conference in Los Angeles in, in the U.S. And so, dun sa, kung makikita mo yung uh, Hollywood, may nakita ko yung Hollywood, dun sa taas po nun, or there's a telescope and there's a uh, full of different stuff for you to understand what the world is. And so, my daughter was telling, you know, that there's this big picture, all these different kinds of uni- universe, this cosmos that there's just one dot out of the big picture where that dot is our universe. And in that that, imagine, our universe, there is this world, a small planet called Earth that the Lord created. And He created us. And He chose to create you made us Filipinos, and He created and led us born in this time for us to have a relationship. So I was just thinking, wow, it's it's mind-blowing. We are so small, and yet we have a God who is so big. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 2 says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. God is our creator. That out of nothing, God can create anything based on what He wants. That's how powerful our God is. Nothing is impossible with God. That out of nothing, out of unformed darkness, God can create life. And that's why we want to believe in God's miracle. There's nothing we can do here on earth apart from God. There is no blessing apart from God. There is no transformation apart from God. There is no righteousness apart from God. There is no restoration apart from God. There is nothing in this world that God can't do. He is our creator. In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, in NIV, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that has been made. God created all things through Christ and for Him. Everything has to go through Christ. There's nothing in this world that was created and made that it didn't go through Christ. Everything was made. Because of Christ. And I want to say there is no substance who just made out of its form by itself and created the world with out of a blast. All of a sudden, boom! The world was formed. There is no such. God is our creator. Christ is the one who caused all things to happen. 
God the Creator created all things for His purpose and glory. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth, Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. God created everything. All powers and authorities, kingdoms, thrones, dominions, rulers, everything was created. And it's meant for His purpose and for His glory. All the creation that you look around, that you can see, that has its purpose. And even the stones, the mountains can praise and worship God, as the Scripture would say. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, And God saw everything that He had made, and behold, it was very good, and there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. God the Creator created all things good. There is nothing that God created that isn't good. And here's the fact. Here's the truth. God never created evil. Evil doesn't come from God. Again, God the Creator created all things good. It is for His purpose, and it is for His glory. Second, man who was created by God in His image rebelled and distorted God's creation, resulting a separation from Him. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Pakamabigla. Mara, could you please stand up? Sorry, I will be like a nakita. Mara is one of our finest leaders serving in the youth. <laughs> She's full of life. In fact, her dad is one of the pastors of our provincial church. And uh, she's one of our employees of our every nation at Fort. If you, look, if you look at her, everybody looks at her, okay? Don't be conscious. Whose image... Is this person? Whose image? God. God created her exactly the way He wanted. Female. For His glory. For His own purpose. Thank you, Mara. You may take your seat. Dude, the drummer, <laughs> our handsome drummer. Can you please stand up? Can we give our drummer a big, big round of applause? <laughs> Whose image is this person? <laughs> it's God. God didn't make a mistake creating him as male. And he created him in his image and likeness. Thank you, my friend. Every single one of us here, whether you like it or not, God created you. He did not make a mistake. He created everyone in His image. That's why we are owned by God. Male, female.
That's what the Word of God says. There is no in between. That's the way God created a human being. There's a term we call Imago Dei. Everyone has been created in the image of God. That's why we value sanctity of life. That's why we prayed between the Palestinians and the Israelites, the Jews, the Muslims, the Christians. Why? Because we don't want killings. We value the sanctity of life. Every person has the image of God. Therefore, we do everything we can for that person to live. But of course, if it's person's time that God will take him, what can we do? Amen? God created us. And God made man with intellect. He gave us intellect for us to be aware of himself that he can think, that he can reason, that he can learn. He can communicate verbally using complex and abstract language. There's how many dialects and languages we have in this world. There's so much. I was talking to a, a, a South African in Cape Town. as elevator kami. So they were talking, you know, in their language. I said, excuse me, uh, is that your dialect here? Oh, it's up here. We have 30 different dialects. Whoa, really? Yeah, here in South Africa. And that's one. And I'm sorry, it's not the dialect here. We came from like 50 miles from here. Wow. God, God made man that has an innate creativity manifest in art, in music, in science, in technology, in sports. That's why we're so different. But we appreciate what God has created in man. So whatever, however God created you, He did not make a mistake. You are meant for this. And you should use it all for the glory of God. Man can calculate. He can perform logically, analytically. He can design, create, and invent. Wala hong bobo. Wala. Nakilangan mag-aral tayo. We are to hone our skills. God has given that to man. He gifted us with that. Man is also ethical. Man can distinguish between right and wrong. He can make moral decisions. And you could, later on, when the Lord God created man and woman, the very first, we could see here, how they made that decision. Man is emotional. Man can feel anger, dissatisfaction, compassion, love, grief, and even entire rage. That's how God created us. Man is teleological. Man is a longing for purpose and responsibility. He wants his life he wants to have meaning in life. He wants to have purpose. He has immortality. He will, not ex he will not cease to exist. But man can live forever. He does not only have the physical body, but the immaterial spirit that can act eternally in a very significant ways. That's how God created us. That's why we have a spirit. All the more we... As children of God, we are just passing through here on earth. This is not your residence. Hello? 
That's why you got to know your purpose. You got to be used by God. Are you being used by God? Are you living for God? Do you breathe and move and have God in your being? We should. That's the way God created us. Man is relational just like God. He has a means to commune with God and hear from God. Because of His Spirit within us, He can worship and pray and praise and know His direction, His will, your future that God has prepared you. For we are all representative of God here in this broken world. We can develop relationships to different kinds of people, all human race, tribe, tongue. We can experience community. Next week, we're going to have community. To engage, not just to eat. But God can use that for us to know one another. To bring everyone to a community. Amen? But there was a problem. The very first man and woman rebelled and sinned against God. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten the tree of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Man has a choice. Man decided the very first time not to follow but rebel against the will of God. And because of that, my friends, there was a turnaround that from that time until today, yes, we are created in the image of God, but because of sin, here's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 10 to 12. As it is written, no one is righteous. No, not one. If you're trying to be righteous through good works, it doesn't count. You will never... Consider a man righteous based on his good works. In the eyes of God, it's just like a madoming basahan. It's a filthy rag. That's what it is. No one understands. No one seeks for God. Earlier in the morning, sino inuuna mo? Yung telepono mo yung Bible mo? Sino kinakausap mo? Ka friend mo, sa social media, ka text mo, o si Lord. The Word of God says, all have turned aside. Together, they have become worthless. No one does good. Not even one. Even though you do good, still you are the same. Unrighteous sinner. You are separated away from God. What they sowed, all mankind reap. And we are all the same, unrighteous. No one does good. In Romans chapter 1, verse 28, 32, to emphasize this. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy. Murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossips, slanderers, haters of God. Insolent, haughty, one of the types of pride, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to their parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Though they know God's righteous degree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. It's innate with us to do bad stuff. Di mo kailangan sabihan. 
We're prone to do that. That's who we are. Kahit ano pong gawin natin, the Bible says, in our hearts, there's murder, there's lust, there's evil, there's greed. That's who we are. Every mankind, no matter how religious, all our hearts are the same. It is sin that has caused the creation to fall from the perfect state which God created. That's why we call this a fallen world, a broken world. In Romans chapter 8, verse 20 to 22, for the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. We will never graduate from pain. It's always part of this world, this broken, fallen world. Suffering, pain, chaos, it's all part. Why? Because of our sin. The world is in bondage and it's corrupt. In other translation, it says it is subject to frustration. It's bondage to decay so it cannot fulfill what God has intended for His purpose because of our sin. That's the problem, my friends. Kaya walang pagbabago. Gusto magbago, hindi ka magbago. Kasi nga, yung root, yung bottom line, yung puso natin. I remember, a person says, even though you get rid of all the guns in the world, Get rid of all armaments, missiles, lahat na. Get rid, throw that to the ocean. You know what? The next day, people will still kill themselves. They will find a stick, a barbecue stick to kill one another. Why is that? Not because of the external, but of the internal. We are all the same because of our hearts. We are all sinners. Amen? That's who we are. And we believe in that. We are separate from, from God. There is nothing you can do in order for you to get close to God. We did that. I was religious. I was named after this saint. I was, that's why my mom named me Anthony. I'm supposed to be a monk, all right? And I remember... Pinoposisyon po ako. Okay. Kinalagyan ako ng cape. <laughs> Pinoposisyon ako kasi baka mamaya may blessing po doon eh. We will never be right with God. But here's the good news. God, in His infinite wisdom, love, mercy, and grace made the way to reconcile and restore man through Christ. God has to find a way. In man, there's hopelessness. But what is the way? All men are the same. God has to find a way. The miracle of God becoming man, born of a virgin, born as a man, but there's a condition. He's a divine, but he became human. We're going to talk more about that next Sunday. But the only way, the only way, not the church. Sorry to say that. The only way is the person who is God, who was there when he created the world. And yet, He is the solution. He is the answer. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. And through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on the earth or in heaven, 
making peace by the blood of His cross. There's no other person except God Himself. God who became man, sacrificed Himself, live a sinless life, a perfect life in perfect obedience. One sin, it will all ruin. We will never be living at this time. But God, in His infinite wisdom, has its way of giving God Jesus to us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 to 11 says, But God showed His love for us. That while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since therefore we have now been justified by His blood, much more shall we be saved by Him from the wrath of God. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more now that we are reconciled shall we be saved by this life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. We are away and separated from God, but God was the one who went down in our place so He could reach out to us for us to be reconciled. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 to 19 says, All this is from God who through Christ, reconciled us to Himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. And that is Christ, God was reconciling the world to Himself, not counting their trespasses against, against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. There's anything that God is so good at. You know what is that? All of us is part in, in the kingdom of God. He's good of shish. Letting His light shine through in us so that we will all be drawn to Him out of our stubbornness, our rebellious heart. I want to tell you this. There is hope. Your habitual sin, there is hope. Your struggles within, there is hope. You are in addiction, whatever that is, there is hope. God is here to reach out and reconcile to you. Hello. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, For our sake, God made Him, His Son Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. My friends, in our culture, where we do everything we can to be right, we can't. There is no hope. No matter how religious you are, you can't. But there's only one way. The man, God, who knew no sin, he became sin for you. He took all your sin sacrifice himself right there and nail it to the cross. Shed his blood so that we may receive the forgiveness of sin. But he didn't stay there. After three days, he rose from the dead. So he can give us what we don't deserve. And that is a relationship with God to be reconciled to be right with God that everyone who would accept Him put His faith in what He did. The Bible says He'll become the righteousness of God. No matter what had happened, the creation, God is our creator, but we all fell because of the first man who rebelled and sinned against God. Every man is the same. But thanks be to God, we don't have to work out for our salvation. Someone did it and took the punishment that you're supposed to be punished. He took it right there on the cross with all pain, all suffering for us to be bought with His precious blood 
so we can be with Him, be reconciled, and we be called children of God. Is God amazing? Can we give a Lord a big, big round of applause? I want us to ponder that for a while. We don't underestimate our sin. That's who we are. We believe every person is a sinner, hopeless. He needs a Savior. And that's who God is. And I believe the Lord is here. The Lord wants to let you know there is no sin that He cannot forgive. There is no sin that He cannot change. He who had no sin became sin so that in Christ we become the righteousness of God. Can we just bow our heads right now and close our eyes and just ponder that. Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for the power of your word. I thank you. Even as we hear your word today, you are speaking to us because that's the way you wired us, Lord. We have your Holy Spirit to hear from you, to hear your word. If you don't just hear your word, we can respond. We're not just hearers of your word, but be doers of your word. Lord, I thank you for your heart of compassion and love and mercy. Because of your infinite wisdom, you have given to us your son who died and sacrificed and suffered for us so that we may all be right with Christ. Lord, thank you that this is what we believe on. This is how we are shaped in our faith. Wherever we go, we will always embrace this as a tenet of our faith. While every heads are bowed down and eyes closed, you know who you are. If the Lord is speaking to you regarding the things that you're not supposed to do, regarding your choices, God has given us choices. You are immortal. You are moral. And what makes us powerful is that we have Christ, that we can overcome, that we can rise above in the situation and do His will for us. Lord, here we are. We embrace Your call. We embrace Your will. If there's anything that the Lord has been speaking to you, would you respond in faith and respond by repenting and say, Lord, I want to be right with You. Lord, help me once again. Father, thank You that You are the righteousness. You are my righteousness. You are the righteousness of the church. And so, Lord, thank you by the blood of Jesus as we repent. You're cleansing us. You're making us pure. You're making us holy. You're making us white as snow once again. Thank you, Lord. While heads are bowed down and eyes closed, maybe there's one or two. I don't know. Maybe you know who you are but you've never surrendered your life to Christ. Jesus paid the price for your sin. That he had no sin, but yet he became a sin for us so that you may become the righteousness of God. If that's who you are today, you know who you are. Would you raise up your hand today and say, that's me, Pastor, because I want to pray for you by giving your life to God. If that's who you are, would you raise up your hand while every head are bowed down in ice and say, I want to give my life to Christ. Just raise up your hand and say, that's me, Pastor. I want to give my life to Christ. 
Would you raise up that hand and say, that's me. I want to surrender and give my life to Jesus who died for my sin. Yes, I see that hand. Anyone else? Yes, I see that hand. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you for, res for responding and hearing God today. Anyone else? The Bible says, do not harden your hearts. For today is the day of your salvation. The Lord wants to save you and forgive you. Would you right now say yes to God's invitation? Because He wants to make you right. Just raise up your hand. I see that hand. Thank you so much. Anyone else? You know who you are. Just between you and God. He's a personal God. Anyone else? Raise up your hand if that's you. Pastor, I'm not right with God. I'm making a decision today for the last time. For the last time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Anyone else? You're hardening your heart. You know the Lord is calling you. I want to give you a chance. Would you raise up your hand to God? This is no accident moment. Thank you, Jesus, for the last time. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. To those of you who raise up your hand, would you stand up on your feet? I want to pray for you. Please stand up on your feet. It's okay, man. Just stand up on your feet. Lady over there, just stand up on your feet. I just want to pray for you personally. Ma'am, yes, just stand up on your feet. It's okay. Yes, just stand up on your feet. It's okay. Yes, thank you. Praise God. Thank you so much. I just want to pray for you and lead you to Christ. Is it okay? Can I ask you to come here in front? Would you come up in front? Just can, 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 some, can one of their leaders uh, usher them here in front? Well, I just want to make sure that... Thank you so much. Just come here in front. If you did not raise up your hand and you know that the Lord is touching you, just like them, they responded. Just stay here in front. Would you come in front and give your life to Christ? Thank you so much. How many of you believe that God is so good? He's so merciful. He never condemns. I just want to lead you into prayer. And after this, there will be people who are going to stand with you. So I'd like to ask the Victory Group leaders just to stand with them. Just say this prayer out loud. Just close your eyes. Bow your heads down. Say this prayer after me. Pakiulit lang po itong prayer na ito. Panginoon, humihingi po ako nakapatawaran sa lahat po nakasalanan ng ginawa ko. Lord, here I am. I humble myself. Lord, today, I surrender my life. I ask you to forgive me. Lord, I invite you to come to live inside of me. From this day on, you will be my Lord, my Savior. Thank you, Lord, for dying for me on the cross. I believe in my heart that God raised you from, dead, from the dead so I could be saved. Thank you, Lord, for this new life, the gift of eternal life. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Lord, marami po salamat that because of this, there are rejoicing that's happening in heaven because of this decision. We give you glory, Lord, for what you've done. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give the Lord a big, big hand? Please remain in front. Please remain in front. And so... I'd like to do this in our 10 a.m. service. Can we all stand in our feet? I want us to recite what we believe in as we heard the Word of God. Let's all recite this together at the counter. Is that okay? Okay, let's all read it and declare it as we declare the doctrine. Of the, of the doctrine of the creation and fall. Let's say this together. One, two, three, go. We believe God created all things, visible and invisible, out of nothing and all very good. He sovereignly sustains and governs creation for His glory and the benefit of His creatures. God created humans in His image, male and female, to know love and glorify Him in covenant relationship and to serve as stewards of the earth. The first man, Adam, sinned against God, resulting in alienation, death, guilt, shame, and curse upon the earth, separated from God and subject to His judgment. All humans have inherited a sinful nation from which they cannot save themselves. 
Lord, thank you that even today, as we declare, Lord, I pray that you cause the word to be rooted in our hearts, in our soul, that truly, Lord, we believe that you are the Savior of the world. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Go in the peace and the love of God. Next week, don't miss our community. God bless you. Thank you so much.